Welcome to the Burnouts and Rotor Blades YouTube channel. Let's go do something awesome. Alright, you guys will remember my 1984 Chevrolet C30 dually from a previous video. And we're going to fix the AC. It's a little bit of a time warp because the introduction video will show that the AC works, hopefully. But we're going to fix it before I actually introduce it because, well, it's Vegas. During the day, it's about 110, 115, and I just don't want to drive it with that kind of heat. I've already made an attempt to make this AC system work. My dad came down. We pulled the orifice tube out, which was installed backwards. So this is, this is the part that we should be sticking out and it would have been easy to grab hold of it, but they shoved it in so hard, you can actually see where they broke this off, this piece right here. They broke these two ribs off right here, trying to get it in the wrong way. That's impressive. Any girl will tell you, don't force it. We used a lot of air pressure to finally get it out, and when it launched, it ended up bouncing off my dad, who was standing like right about here, and going up underneath the cowl, and ending up on the windshield. First time I've seen, that distance from an orifice tube. We just put a new orifice tube in it and fired it up and nothing good happened. The The AC pump started smoking immediately. We're gonna go ahead and replace the compressor with a remanufactured compressor. Anytime you open up an AC system, you should definitely replace the orifice tube. It doesn't matter when it was done. And then you should also replace the dryer, this big silvery chunk over here. If you do it right, a good system should last you five years. It's going to be our manifold gauge sets home for a little while. We'll hook this one up to our vacuum pump and uh, these two to where they belong in the AC system and vacuum this thing down. Happy birthday! <laughs> Some of the previous owner's handiwork here. We'll go ahead and try to fix that situation up as well. That is not hold. Look at that. Pieces of, pieces of rubber hose they put in there to hold that thing up. Wow. I think my radiator's held in by zip ties. And no clamp on that. Cool. Ooh. You know, just, just, it's just leaking Whoa. continuously. Now we're going to start taking the system apart and we're going to start with these lines here that go into the condenser so we can get it out, get the new one installed. You should always back up your AC lines because You'll destroy your hard line if you don't. It should be able to just pull that guy right out of there. It's about two inches shorter. As it turns out, this is what's called a parallel flow and this one's called a tube and fin style. These are better for R12 and these are better for R134A. The aftermarket just quietly swapped over to this one and you can't even really find this one available. And when you do, it's 250 bucks or something like that. It's easy enough just to remount the mount bushings over a little bit. That's what we're gonna do. Right there just to protect the radiator. I'm gonna take this bracket that would normally hold this stock bushing and remove the outboard side so that I can still use the inboard side to go snap into that groove down there that I just cut open that you can't see. Sweet, sliding that over just a little bit. Made it fit like a glove. We get the top mounts in order. It does matter which way they go because they're two different styles. Push this down. We've already swapped over our brackets from our old compressor to our new compressor. The new compressor is sitting up on its nose for three minutes prior to installation per the instructions. Also, this tag that was covering the service port says that this compressor has already been serviced with three ounces of oil and we only need to add the remainder of the tin that this system requires whenever we're doing the final servicing on it. Ester oil with dye. Ester oil is what I would recommend if you're going from a one or for an R12 system to an R134A system. It is compatible with both. 
the PAG oil is not compatible with the mineral oil from the R12, so do not mix them or else you're in, a world, in for a world of hurt. Your compressor will probably seize up, all kinds of bad stuff will happen, the police will arrest you and aliens will come abduct you, so don't do that. Also, I want to mention, whenever you do a system, especially one that's an older system and you want to move from a R12 application to an R134A application, you should really seriously look at changing out the AC lines. The reason being that the molecule size for the R134A is smaller than the R12. So these little, these little pockets are just failure points waiting to happen. The refrigerant was being pressurized through the lining and is captured by this last lining. If your line shows any sign of failure, um, any rubbing or anything like that, or it's been around for a long time, the chances that your refrigerant is just going to come leaking out of the line, like material itself, is pretty high. I've seen it happen. I have another video where you can actually see that happen towards the end whenever I did an AC system on an S10 pickup. We're going to go ahead and replace this line as well whenever we install this pump. This thing is heavy. Come on, baby, get in, get in your home. Get in there, jeez. All righty then. All right, and I would always recommend coming back with a, a proper torque wrench or at least a ratchet. Bada bing, bada boom, dunzo. Ah. Note to self, watch your face next time. All right, that's in. I don't want to hold on to the sensor because we're going to need it later for the new dryer. We're going to want to save this for later. Just leave that right there. Let's go ahead and take this one out. We'll go ahead and just take this O-ring off. All these O-rings are junk. This is where the orifice tube is. So if you look right here, there's this little indention. That indention stops your orifice tube from going too far in. It's on your high side. It's also held in on the other side by this tube. And that what's, that's what holds your orifice tube from moving around within the system, usually on the bottom of your evaporator core, at least in GM cars. Duck bills are my absolute favorite pliers for things like this. You should just be able to reach right in here and pull the orifice tube out. That orifice tube looks pretty clean. This is the one that my dad and I replaced. Never reuse an orifice tube either. They're like $1.50 or $3 and just junk it. O-ring off of this one too. All right, the next step is gonna to be to flush out the only component that we haven't changed yet, which is the uh, evaporator core. That's the part in the dash and we don't wanna change it because it's in the dash. There's a couple different ways you can do that. You can order this if you are not doing a whole bunch of these. You can order this stuff right here. It just comes in a can. It looks like the tire servicing stuff and you just plug it up to it. It's already pressurized. You don't need air compressor or anything like that and you can flush out whatever components you need. Now, if you're gonna flush out things, don't bother trying to flush out your condenser core, especially if you think there's metal in there. There are so many tiny little sections and spaces, and especially in the ones that are for 134A, which are not the tube and fin style, they're the, the other cross flow or whatever style, there's no way you're gonna get that stuff out of there. In fact, the instructions on a lot of these things say 1996 and up AC systems, it is impossible to fully flush out the condenser core. So just huck that thing in the trash and get a new one, save yourself a lot of time and hassle, and potentially extend the life of your compressor because if you're sending metal shavings through that condenser core and it makes it back to your compressor eventually over time, then it's gonna start chewing up your compressor and you're gonna find yourself a couple of years later needing a new compressor because you wanted to save a hundred bucks on your you know. Condenser core. So the other option aside from you know one of these cans right here is one of these guys right here. Uh, I, I like using this because it saves me a little bit of money um, whenever you do volume because you have this metal piece right here and then I can just buy you know a gallon jug of the AC flush and pour it in here and then use my air compressor to blow it out and I can up the pressure to whatever the heck I want it to be. We're gonna use this and then I'll also use the other one because yeah, that's like half of one. So that's not gonna get me very far. Now, the other thing I like to do is I like to take some white rags so that you can see what kind of contaminants come out. You can stuff them in a box. You can hold on to them. You can do whatever you want to. Um, since I'm gonna be filming and doing this, I'm gonna stuff them into a little box. And then I like to hold them over the exit end. So whenever you put the solvent through the system, you want it so that it's in the, 
direction of flow, of normal flow. Some people will argue about that, but honestly, that, that's just the way that I do it. Normal direction of flow. If there's contaminants, we'll just keep flowing more stuff through a normal direction of flow until there's no more contaminants. Normal direction of flow, right? That's all you can do. Except for change it, and yeah, I'm not gonna do that. We gotta be careful because somebody left open battery leads for whatever reason. All right, that's pressurized. Normal direction of flow. All right, so there was just a tiny little bit of material in there. Nothing I'm concerned about, so. So we'll just keep blowing through. I'll give this guy a try right here. And let it set for a second. All right, the last part we got to put in is this uh, receiver dryer, accumulator dryer. One of the most important things is that before you go ahead and open anything up, just make sure it fits, make sure it slides into where it's supposed to, right? So that one goes. This one will reach it, cool. All right, we know that that's, that's right. Our sensor was over here, that's right. Our servicing port was right here, we know that's right. Now that we know it's gonna fit, this thing is full of desiccant packets, and those desiccant packet, packets absorb all of the moisture that's in the system, and moisture is the biggest enemy of a good working AC system, aside from like leaks and just mechanical non-function. Uh, so we wanna make sure we don't introduce any moisture by having these desiccant packets full of ambient uh, humidity. So whenever I crack this open, you should hear it hiss because this thing should be full of nitrogen or vacuum. If it's not, just go ahead and return this to the parts store. Well, I heard it, Thunk. the condenser did a better job. They usually come with an O-ring in them. Don't ever use that O-ring. They give you brand new ones. So the one that was smushed underneath that fitting for so long, uh, that's not gonna seal up as well as the one that they gave you that's non-smushed. And remember, you only have about 30 minutes for the manufacturer recommendations to get this thing installed. So you don't wanna mess around once you open that up. Also remember to always back up your lines. So I'm gonna take this guy right here and back up my line that I'm installing. And backing up your line just means holding both sides of the connection point so you don't put any stress or twisting motion on the actual aluminum line. It's just not strong enough to handle it. So pushing these in opposite directions, that's tight. Now we can tighten up this clamp and then we can come back around and put this line on. Don't double O-ring it either. So we see our O-ring in there. Mm. All right, so you can see this fitting. It's got this really gross O-ring in it. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is take a scribe and without stabbing myself, get that O-ring out of there, clean out all the junk. <laughs> Some, but not all of these require that you remove the Schrader valve from inside of here. So I got a Schrader valve tool and the Schrader valve right here. And now that that's out, we can install this guy right here. Last thing to install, is gonna be this sensor. This sensor is supposed to have an O-ring right there. So without cross-threading it, we'll go ahead and install it. This goes right on there. So I've got my manifold gauges set up here um, and they're hooked to the high side. What we're gonna do is we want to do a pressure test on the whole system. I have everything snugged up, fingers crossed, I hope I do. In order to do that, I have this 2000 PSI nitrogen pressure. It's like 2200 PSI hooked up here to a regulator. It's regulated to about 200 PSI and manifold gauges show the same. Now we're gonna let it into the system and then I will disconnect it from the bottle and then we'll see if it leaks out anywhere. You can go to the next step and get a soapy bottle and go over everything if you want to. It's a really, really fast way to tell if you're leaking something. And it's a lot cheaper to buy this nitrogen bottle if you're gonna be doing a whole bunch of systems than it is to fill a system with refrigerant, drain a system of refrigerant. Plus, if you don't have the equipment to properly capture it, you're being illegal because it is against the law to just evacuate a system into the atmosphere. All right, that one says 200 now. We'll let it set for a second. Equalize pressure everywhere. Now I'm gonna shut down the bottles here and I'm gonna shut down this one over here. And this one stays open. That says 
two and the first tick. If nothing leaks out and we have a sound system, not a sound system, but a sound system, then what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, evacuate all that out using our vacuum pump that's right down here. We're gonna vacuum it down for about an hour. Uh, manufacturer recommendation from the actual uh, AC compressor was to vacuum down for 45 minutes to an hour. If you have like one of those small, like one and a half or two CFM pumps, you might wanna let it go for a couple of hours because it's probably not gonna pull out, you know, pull down vacuum hard enough for long enough. We're about three minutes in right now. I'm gonna let it set for another seven minutes. Fast forward. Boop. It's been about 10 minutes. The pressure looks like it's holding just fine. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hook up to the vacuum pump. We're gonna start pumping the pressure out. All right, vacuum pump's on, and I'm slowly gonna open these valves so the pump has a chance. It did pull a vacuum, it did pull down the 22 inches of manifold vacuum. It did hold there for a full 13 minutes now. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip the pump on and we're gonna start our one hour of, uh, of vacuum down. Once that one hour is over, we'll go ahead and start servicing the system up. I've got a couple of uh, rib nuts and screws and a rib nut gun, and I'm gonna drop some rib nuts into the top of this radiator. See if I can't bolt this thing in a way where it's not just flopping in the wind or held by hopes and dreams and zip ties. And there just so happened to be enough headspace on this like center lump piece mounting bracket that I could drill and uh, put these rib nuts in. So that was kind of lucky. Hey, look, I'm American Chopper. I got a unit bit. I can build you a motorcycle. I guess that little burn right there was karma. <laughs> this here. Radiators very, very solidly mounted. Bottom swings a bit. We'll have to work on that. All right, we're done vacuuming down and now it's time to actually service the system. I have my scale set up here. I can't find any real data on this except for three pounds. If we're converting from R12 to R134A, you're only gonna put in 80%. The numbers change. Some folks go with 80, 85. I go with 80% of, of what it calls for for R12 for 134A. We're also gonna keep an eye on the pressures that are up there on the gauges. At this temperature, it's still 93 degrees out. All right, here we go. We're ready time to uh, shoot this stuff in there. Gauges are up here. The scale is right here. We started off at zero and we're gonna read a negative. So we're measuring how much we're taking out of this can of R134A. Let it suck down some from the vacuum, and then I'm gonna start the truck up and make sure that the pump starts sucking down its own amount as well. Fingers crossed, this is always kind of the part that makes me nervous. Even though I know I've done everything correctly, you know, it could still end up really bad. Some people don't like to charge upside down. Some people don't like to charge liquid. I personally like to charge liquid. I find I get a better result from it. And I haven't found anything in literature that says don't do that. So, and that's a big one. So you can see that it's pulling from it. It's gonna start kicking up. It's at 50 PSI that it's taking on right now. I'm gonna keep an eye on this. Whenever it starts to slow down, I'll go jump in the truck and fire it up. And then the engine and the pumps action will do the rest of the work to pull uh, all the Freon out. One pound and a quarter. We're gonna go ahead and shut her on down. That's not that high though. Weird. And the high side is just climbing and climbing. Last night was incredibly frustrating. I had serviced up the AC, so whenever I turned the system on, I expected to see certain things from the gauges. I expected to see the low side go up to somewhere between 40 and 70, and the high side go up somewhere between 175 and 250. The gauges were creeping right up to 250, kind of where I expected it to be. I went back inside, look and see if it had come down, and I started feeling a little bit of cool air come out, like 
cooler than ambient, cooler than 90 degrees. I walk back out here and it's dang near at 500 PSI on the high side. There's a valve on the back of the compressor and if it over pressures like that, it'll blow that valve off uh, and evacuate the pressure. So it was almost there. I ran back, I shut everything down and I just could not figure out um, why it would be doing that. So the gauges tell you a lot. If the high side is high and the low side is low, then you've got a clog and it's not getting from your high side through to your low side. If your high side is low and your your low side is high, then your pump is not putting out. You know, there's all kinds of diagnostic things that these can tell you. And what it was telling me was I was super overcharged, right? Super high high side, super high low side, which is weird because whenever I turn it off, they both come back down to pretty much where they're at now, like 150 PSI. What the heck? And then I realized when I turned the AC on, the fans didn't come on. That's that is a critical thing. Anytime that you have an AC system and you turn it on, the fans should come on immediately. All the all the fans come on, and this truck has electric fans. Now, I should have known that the previous owner didn't even secure the radiator to the truck. Obviously, he didn't wire in the extra relay that you need to kick the fans on whenever you engage the AC clutch. I just, <sighs> yeah. For right now, we're just gonna try to get those relays to kick both fans on so that then I can turn the AC system on and make sure that it works properly like it's supposed to without being super dangerous. So I have the wiring temporarily done for the fans. They're both on, so let's do it. Perfect. It's coming out like 40 degrees on the inside, which let's see what temperature it is right now. Pressures are perfect. Your high side pressure should be double the ambient temperature, so that's 192 plus 50 degrees. 192, 250 right here, so that's it should be 240. Perfect. Things we have left to do is evacuate the gauges. Uh, I have a particular way that I like to do that. Uh, I like to disconnect the high side first and then let the low side suck all the stuff out of my gauges. That lets me know that everything that I put into the system that I measured from the, uh, the from the scale is actually in the system and not stuck in my gauges. Plus, it's less pressure on the gauges with them just sitting there so they're not full of 250 PSI. The AC is working. The fans come on whenever I turn the AC compressor on and all that works awesome. So next we gotta go inside. So I went ahead and I turned the truck on, I turned the AC on, and I felt the fan pressure coming out of, out of the AC box, and it's pretty substantial, but somehow the vents are super duper weak, and we're gonna have to do some things to remedy that situation. All the stuff down here is from the AC vents, and I, I took out everything, and everything was duct taped together. There was a piece of giant toilet paper roll. I don't know if it's supposed to be like that. So I've gone down to Napa and I ordered this piece of defroster tubing. It's like the dryer uh, tubing, but just a little bit more robust. And then also this, wait, what kind of tape is this? Whatever, aluminum tape, 3M 3350 tape. A lot of duct tape residue. I'll go through here and clean all this stuff up. It's gonna take me a while, but we're gonna do the whole thing. Now that the ducts are all clean, I ordered and installed this door edge guard, which just clips over the edge of whatever you're gonna put it on. Pretty clean little look. It does a really, really good job of sealing up these vents that were engineered to be pretty sloppy from the 80s. End result is a lot more pressure out of the vents, so it's something I'd highly recommend doing. It actually provides just a little bit better seal. What we do here is go back, 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 back. just how well they seal up. Oh yeah. 
it's gonna seal up nice. Driving around in the truck, yeah, it's night, but we'll see what this thing says. But it is way down near 32. I'm very happy with that. Don't forget to subscribe if you like the content and want to see more like it. And as always, thanks for watching. All right, now I want to see if I can make it into your bucket. <laughs> let me move your hand. No. Move your hand. Let me try. You want me to throw it in the car, but you want to throw it in my pocket? Yes. That's how it works. <laughs> <laughs>